Welcome back. In the previous video we have already talked about algorit algorithmic differentiation but in the forward mode. And in this video we would like to discuss the second variant of algorithmic differentiation in the so-called backward mode. The key advantage of algorithmic differentiation at all is that generally any mathematical expression, so a cost function plus an underlying model and so on, can be represented as a directed acyclic graph, so on DAC as we have seen here in this little example, which we have already used also in the previous video. The advantage of the deck is also that I can uh, represent like computational um, constructs like for loops, while loops, if else statements and so on also in a deck, such that I can press in basically any computation which is relevant to data science for dynamical systems into a deck using Julia or other programming languages and then apply again the algorithmic differentiation to it to get accurate uh, partial derivatives and so on. But let's go to the details of the backward mode. So the backward mode is basically, as the name already tells, the idea of calculating the derivatives not starting from the inputs of the function, but starting at the outputs of the function and then go towards the inputs. And in order to do so, the, the main key uh, utilization is also here to utilize the chain rule but now based on some output y, so y would be any of these outputs, with respect to delta or partial derivative of w, so that would be uh, any of these inputs, that can be also rewritten as a partial derivative of j with respect to v1, which would be like any of these intermediate stages, times v1, partial derivative with respect to w is equal and so on, right? So we didn't change the equation. We basically just said, okay, again, we can represent this differential calculus in a backward fashion manner. And this chain rule basically evaluated from the back end to the front end can be then also rewritten as an, yeah, let's say graphical rule for the so-called adjoints in the backward mode saying, that the partial derivative of y, so of any output of the function of our intermediate stages, with respect to the intermediate stage vi, which we call as short notation vi bar, the so-called adjoint, is identical to the sum of j element of the successors of i with respect to v j bar, so the successors of i, times the partial derivative of v j with respect to the partial derivative of v i. And that is the so-called adjoint. Definition. And we will utilize these adjoints in our computational graph to basically calculate the derivatives, the partial derivatives from backward to forward. Let's do that and um, let's do that again with our specific example which we have sketched here. Uh, we also need a seeding here as we have done it in the forward mode, but in the forward mode we basically did a seeding with respect to the inputs. Now we do a seeding with respect to the outputs. And our first seeding will be basically that we will consider the first output, so v2, and we will not consider the second output, uh, v3, uh, which we set to zero in the seeding. So that would mean the adjoints, v2 bar would be one, and v3 bar would be zero. So that would be here our seed for our evaluation, and we will denote this as the first seed. Okay, now let's just apply this chain rule in this backward fashion. So if we started with v2 going backward, of course the next adjoint we want to calculate is v1. So v1 bar is identical to the sum of the successors. Obviously the only successor we have of v1 with respect to the actual seeding we have is v2. So that would be v2 bar times the partial derivatives of v2 and with respect to the partial derivative of v1 
and that is then v2 bar times log of v1 with respect to the partial derivative of v1 and then this is of course v2 bar times um, 1 over v1 and v2 bar was part of our seeding which is 1 and v1 is the primal which we have already calculated in the previous example for the evaluation of 1 and 2 at the beginning so we would of course need to go through the primals at the very beginning I have just skipped that step in order to go a little bit quicker here through this video but of course in the in the initial step of going towards the backward mode we will, would have one forward pass in order to calculate the primals again so we therefore assume that we have access to the primals which was 2 so therefore we would have 1 times 1 over 2 which would be 0.5 okay so that would be the adjoint for this intermediate step here so we can already put that here so 0.5 as the adjoint for the sensitivity with respect to the first output and now we can basically go backwards more in the other direction so from v1 to w1 and to w2 the two here by the way is missing so let's calculate the adjoint w1 which of course is then the partial derivative of y1 with respect to w1 according to our definition and if we plug that in as we have also just one successor node here in our graph that would be then v1 bar so that is the only successor times the partial derivative of v1 with respect to w1 and that is identical to v1 bar times the partial derivative of v1 times v2 because that's the definition of v1 in our example and divided by the partial derivative of w1 and that is then identical to v1 bar times v2 so v1 bar we have calculated in the previous step which is 0.5 and v2 is our primal which is 2 so we have basically 1 half times 2 which is identical to 1 so that would be then the adjoint or to be more specific the partial derivative of the first output with respect to the first input we can of course do the same for the second input w2 is identical to the output sensitivity of the first output with respect to w2 and that is then the adjoint v1 bar times the partial derivative of v1 with respect to w2 if we apply our adjoint calculation rule and that is then v1 bar times again the partial derivative of v1 times v2 which is identical at w1 times w2 divided by w2 2 in this case and what we get from that is v1 bar times w1 v1 bar was 0.5 and the primal of w1 was 1 so the adjoint here is 0.5 okay so what have we calculated now with these adjoints we have basically done a backward parse so a backward pass from the first output to all inputs, right? So with one backward pass back through the DAC, we have basically calculated the sensitivities, the partial derivatives of that specific output with respect to all inputs. And that basically means we have calculated with that seeding one row of our Jacobian matrix. And of course we can also now do that in a similar way for the second uh, output so for uh, y2 in this case we need to change the seeding so we set v2 bar to 0 and v3 bar to 1 so it would be our new seed which I call the seed 2 and this will give us the second row of the Jacobian matrix and based on this seeding we now apply basically the same calculation rules and first calculate v1 bar so the adjoint of this intermediate node 
which is then v3 bar times the partial derivative of v3 with respect to v1. And that is then v3 bar times the partial derivative of e to the power of v1 with respect to the partial derivative of v1. So that becomes v3 bar times e to the power of v1. And that is then basically v3 versus the seeding of 1 and e to the power of v1. So that's a primal, that's 2. So that is basically e to the power of 2. So if we calculate or if we add the adjoints of this new seeding, we will get here an e to the power of 2 for this new seeding. Then we can also directly calculate the sensitivities. So v1 bar being identical to the partial derivative of the second output with respect to the first input. And that would be then, of course, v1 bar times the partial derivative of v1 with respect to w1. And that is then e to the power of 2 times w2, and that is then 2 times e to the power of 2. And last but not least, w2 bar being the sensitivity of the second output with respect to the second input of our system, and that is then v1 bar times the partial derivative of v1 with respect to w2, and that is then um, just e2 times 1. Okay, so these would be then the adjoints here and here. Okay, great. So we have now seen that with one backward pass, we are able to calculate the sensitivities of all inputs with respect to one output. And that is actually what we want to have, right? So in machine learning, data science for dynamical systems and so on, we normally have many inputs, so these are the parameters of our model which we're going to optimize, and we normally have just one output which is the cost function. So therefore, the algorithmic differentiation on the backward mode is normally the go-to approach how to get the derivatives for the gradients and for the Hessians of a cost function. There are also, let's say, intermediate uh, solutions where I combine backward and forward mode passes in order to get for example, the Hessians, but these are technical details. We are, do not going here into details. However, there's also a negative uh, thing I would like to mention here with the backward mode, which we need to take into account is that if I want to calculate the adjoints that I need to first do my forward pass in order to get all the primals, I need to store these primals into memory. And when I do the backward pass through the adjoint rule, I need also to store these intermediate results of the adjoints, including their computational rules. And that is also called a gradient tape or an adjoint tape, which I need to store into memory. So the entire forward pass and the intermediate uh, calculations rule of the adjoints and the backward pass. And that normally leads to a certain overhead of the backward mode in comparison to the forward mode where I just go once through the network and do not need to store so many intermediate results. So that leads to the fact that the forward mode can be uh, more efficient computationally in small problems like this which I have sketched here. However, if I have many input parameters like an artificial neural network for example which could have hundreds, thousands or even millions or billions of parameters, then the backward mode is definitely the go-to approach. In our GitHub repository, you will also find a benchmarking uh, Jupyter Notebook where we basically um, try out different forward mode, backward mode, as well as finite difference approaches in order to evaluate a little bit in which scenario, which differentiation technique has which advantages and disadvantages when it comes to computational time and also memory demand. So have a look at our GitHub repository to check that out uh, in order to get some, let's say, more intuition when uh, which differentiation technique might be the most uh, appropriate one. However, if you are unsure, then definitely in machine learning, especially in the context of data science for dynamical systems, the automatic differentiation with the backward mode or for small problems with the, with the forward mode would be the go-to approaches. I hope I could give you a first 
uh, introduction into the different algorithmic differentiation techniques or differentiation techniques in general. We could already have an entire lecture series just on the details of these techniques, but they should just give you a first intuition to differentiate the different approaches with their pro and cons arguments. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.